Happy October. Can you believe it's already October? I'm Pastor Robert Suits, Associate Pastor here at South Roanoke United Methodist Church. We're trying something a little bit new with a midweek boost where we come together and um, use the video technology to check in with each other during the middle of the week. It's good to be here during the middle of the week. A lot going on. You may even hear the sound of the children from the preschool in the background. It can be a busy place here at South Roanoke. Um, some of you may have grown up in churches that used to have the midweek service. Wednesday night used to be sacred time to come together, um, to, to gather together. And, and the churches I was a part of, we didn't have Wednesday night services, but some of our neighbor churches sometimes did. But Wednesday night was also a night where things happened around the church. And it was kind of good to get a little boost during the week. Our schedules are so crazy these days. Can you imagine trying to get everybody together on a Wednesday? But maybe we can come to you um, each week during the middle of the week and just have a little pick-me-up. And we're going to do that today, and I want to use today's um, midweek boost to think about this coming Sunday because this coming Sunday is World Communion Sunday. It's traditionally a time on this first Sunday, of <clears throat> first Sunday of October where folks have an opportunity to come together in all our many traditions and remember that we are one at the table of the Lord. So that's what we're going to be doing this week, and we're also doing something a little bit different that I'll tell you about in just a moment. But first, I want to share a funny video from one of my favorite content providers. It's a series called Chuck Knows Church, and it will explain a little bit of World Communion Sunday in a humorous way. Around and around it goes, and where the world stops, nobody knows. Oh, I'm going to live in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, apparently. So, bad, bad go. Um, all right, the world in all its splendor and glory. Quite astonishing, don't you think? You know, the real world is actually a lot bigger than this, and it's more astonishing than this. Whatever, look at this glow. Now, imagine it actual size. All right, now imagine what it would be like if all Christians of this world, actual size, were to join together at the Lord's table, all taking Holy Communion at the same time. Impossible, you might think. Well, there is a way that it might just be possible, and that's why we are talking about World Communion Sunday on this episode of Chuck Knows Church. I've always loved to spin on these things. Oh, we got a Crazy, Mr. Again. Ah, okay, 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 okay. World Communion Sunday is celebrated uh, once a year <laughs> by. Christian denominations uh, around the globe on the first Sunday of October. It promotes Christian and ecumenical unity. Now, World Communion Sunday began in 1933 in the Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was later adopted by Presbyterian churches throughout the states and then spread to other denominations all around the world. Now, in 1940, the Federal Council of Churches, now known as the National Council of Churches, endorsed the Ecumenical Sunday, promoting it worldwide. Now, in the United Methodist Church, it is one of uh, six ch church-wide uh, special Sundays. Uh, the offering taken during World Communion Sunday benefits leadership, graduate, and undergraduate scholarships for both national and international students for both the Ethnic Scholarship Program and the Ethnic In-Service Training Program. United Methodists encourage qualified people, especially youth and young adults, to apply for scholarships, and the church gives generously to the special offering, which often enables first-generation students to attend college, uh, maybe even med school. <laughs> if you'd like to know more, be sure to ask your pastor. Tell them Chuck sent you. Yeah, it throbs. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's like pulsing. I can, my, I can feel my heartbeat in my fingers. <laughs> so in my lifetime, 
And in the lifetime of South Roanoke UMC, communion has changed a little bit in the Methodist Church. As in many of our sister denominations, it has become more celebrative and focused on all of God's mighty acts and not just on the cross of Jesus, but upon all that God has done for us since the dawn of creation. This Sunday, as we thought about how we could tie World Communion Sunday into our 100th anniversary of the church, Pastor Craig and I decided to go back and sort of have a throwback Sunday as we dust off some of the forms of communion that might have been used at the time, the very first communion service back in 1924 at South Roanoke. This I found in our church library. It's one of the disciplines of the church from the year 1930, and it has the communion service in it. And many of the prayers that were used at that time during the earliest years of our church we're going to be using those this Sunday. They're a little more meditative and penitential and confessional in nature. Some of them will bring back some memories to you, like the prayer, we do not presume to come to this your table, trusting in our own goodness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord and it is your nature to have mercy. As a child in the Methodist Church in Texas, we prayed that prayer every first Sunday of the month as we gathered the Lord's table. Some people didn't like it, the idea that I'm not worthy to sweep up under the table of the Lord. Um, but other people appreciated what the prayer was trying to say, and that is that it is not our worthiness that we bring to the Lord's table. None of us are worthy, but the Lord's table is given to us as a gift. So this coming Sunday, October 6th, we're going to be using some of those older traditional prayers that are actually rooted in the old Church of England. Those were the ones that were brought over when the Methodist Church took root in the USA. And um, it may not be quite as celebrated, but I hope it will be meaningful to you. I hope you'll make every effort to attend. Of course, we'll have the worship service um, shared on our YouTube sanctuary as we normally do, but communion is one thing that is best experienced in person. It is when we come together. Communion means community, the table of the Lord where we gather together. So do everything possible to join us in worship this Sunday. If you're not in the Roanoke area, find a church on World Communion Sunday. Be a part of the worldwide table of the Lord this Sunday. <clears throat> Let me give a little special prayer for you now. God, I pray for each one watching this video, Lord, that we'll will be um, appropriately prepared for this coming Sunday, that we will find our place at your table, not worthy because of anything we can bring. There's nothing we can bring that would make us worthy, but instead receiving your great and amazing gifts. On this 100th year of celebrating worship services in this place, we remember those first days when they broke bread together, and now we look forward to doing so again this Sunday. Be with us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to be with you in this video format. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday for Holy Communion and then next week for another midweek boost.